Hello and welcome. I'm working on the Tempest jacket fitting given the chaotic, tragic events happening in the world. I hope you're safe and well. Today's exciting episode is a beading video. I bead the jacket that I've called the Tempest. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So it is time to be the Mediterranean tweed. And I've decided because it's a Mediterranean tweed that it's going to be shipwrecked that like the Tempest, Shakespeare's play. So it's going to be um, the Mediterranean colours, obviously, like the ceramic tiles of the roof, as well as the white and blue of the Greek and Italian, you know, those villages as well um just for the tempesty waves i'm going to have teal for those so yeah anyway i'm just giving you a look because all those colors are in it basically everything in there so the sand as well and that sort of um aqua beautiful ocean aqua color Probably not going to pick up the green, which is a bit of a disappointment to me because, as I often tell you, <laughs> green is my favorite color. But the Tempest is about shipwrecks, and I don't, I, th I think the green would sort of be a little jar too jarring. So I basically picked up every other color and my hand blown glass beads, the really, really expensive ones. There's not really many green ones in there. There's a couple that are blue and green, which go well with the teal and the ocean colors. So I'll keep those ones in. Oh, and I've got, um, I think I've got 37 or 38 left of the dead fish ones, the bronze beads that are in the dead fish. I used most of them in the dragonfly jacket but yeah Shakespeare had 37 plays well he, it's estimated that he wrote more than 40 but um, only 37 were included in the first folio that everyone has and the rest were lost to time so yeah I, I thought I'd include them and now I'm just showing you all the things. So there's sand colored ones, ocean colored ones, the ceramic tiles for the roof. Those are the bicone ones I mentioned in the um, video where I made this. And there's a couple left over from the vintage knit one, those um, flesh colored round beads. I've also got some smaller ones. Those are the hand blown ones and some um, crystal cut big glass apricot ones, orangey sort of colored ones not sure exactly how they tie in but they just look so beautiful I had to add them in so here we go this is the jacket just tweed it's the last time you're going to see it this way I'm about to make it very very bling indeed in a shipwreck kind of way whatever that means I was going to you know the Egyptian tweed so this one it was a teal and gold tweed and then I it, I sort of be oh and also the dragonfly jacket but we'll look at the um, Egyptian tweed first so with this one it was like the tweed is made out of ribbons mostly and with this one the same it's strips of tie-dyed silk and they sort of form little squares. And so I put a bead in each square. And when I was making this Mediterranean tweed up, like for as long as I've had it, I just, um, well, originally when I bought it, I thought I would do a beaded trim around it because that's what I always used to do. But then since I've been doing these embellished jackets where the beads are directly onto the tweed, I've been thinking of one like this where it's just all over. But do you remember the Italian tweeds? There's the green Italian tweed that has the red rows of uh, beads around it. And there's the blue Italian denim tweed, this one here, with these jewel tone beads around it. And I'm thinking, probably because they're jewels, I was like, ooh, pirate treasure. So I'm thinking I'll do it like this, but um, in Mediterranean colours, so washes and waves of all the Mediterranean colours. And I'm also thinking of doing a triangle on the back of the um, vintage knit one on the left there. And I... but because I've already done the jacket, I was going to make it look camouflage. So if you don't really know what you're looking at, you might not see the triangle. But 
if you know what you're looking for, you'll be able to see, oh, there is a camouflage triangle there. So I'm kind of thinking of the same concept for this one here. So Lord knows how that's going to work out, but let's do this. So then I went and did some beading and I beaded the whole of the first row and here we have it. This took so much time. Can I just tell you, it took so much time and I've sort of gone in colour groups and so basically I used a a whole length of thread in the teal colour, then a whole length of thread in the brownie apricot colour and then a creamish um, colour and then I did another um, a ceramic colour thread and sort of went back and so that's why some parts are thicker I had a bit more thread left. So that's what I did for the first one and yeah I, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. I get clearer as I do the second line and the third line. My vision for it gets clearer but I was just sort of being a little bit random. If I had an infinite amount of time. Oh, I love this little ceramic skull that's hanging down on beads because if you stitch the ceramic skulls just straight onto the fabric, then the um, because of the way the bead is weighted, the face sort of nuzzles into the fabric and it ends up looking like a kind of round bead rather than a skull one. So I hung it on a little string of teal coloured beads and it looks awesome can I just say so I'm going to do more of those it was just an experimental one I'm going to do like the first layer is just blocking all the different colours so this is my second row now as you can see it got darker and I put a bit too much in that yellow section obviously I'm going to add more in between those but yeah I just I felt like I wasn't really sure whether I should have a yellow section or not and I was sort of doubled down on it. And now that I've done, I'm doing this part of the voice of, over of the video after I've done the first three and I like it now but it looked a little questionable for a while there. So here we go, I've done the third row and I finally used some of those apricot orange beads and some of more of the hand-blown glass ones in sort of orange well they had orange featured in them and that's amazing I have had these beads for the longest time and oh one of the fish is upside down I don't know how I managed that I mean I could cut it out like they're so securely attached that I can't actually turn it around but I could cut the threads tie them off restitch it on but I'm not that bothered if they're dead fish of course one of them's going to go belly up that's literally what dead fish do anyway that is the first three rows done so I'm gonna go do some more now and I, I won't show you every single one but yeah I, I, I know how I'm going to do the rest of the design now so yeah I will be back once a little bit more is done. I'm still not sure about the thin white sections because I did intend to do those but now I don't know how you could do them justice given this particular way of beading, this sort of pattern that I'm using or implementing. So we shall see. So then I kept working away and I did one more row and but it was dark so I just left it until the next day to film it and this is a reminder of the lovely Mediterranean setting that inspired this tweet and here we go it just looks so epic I love it like stitching the shells on is impossible because you have to hold the tweed from the back you have to hold the slice of shell from the front like how do you even do that and you have to stitch with your other hand so it's just impossible basically you hold your hand flat and then just balance everything on top and really really delicately use your other hand to stitch in and out but it is impossible because of the weight of the entire jacket as well and because it's a fitted like three-dimensional object as well oh impossible and it's got all these well, they're quite fragile and expensive gloss blown beads on there as well. So it was a lot, but yes. So um, I'm, I'm so glad though. It looks awesome. 
And um, so it's not going to be like this in the end. As I said, this is the there's going to be at least three um, layers of beads. So this is the base layer of beads that give me an idea of where all the color block is and how they run into each other. Once I've done all of this, like finished the torso, finished the sleeves, then the next bit will be, um, I'm not sure about the cream section on the... Um, Le well it's on the left side of the screen that part of the jacket I'm not sure if I'll unpick them and make it a different color I don't know anyway so this is the base layer of the beads and then the second lot is going to be small sequins in tiny little stacks kind of like I did with the gold beads in the Egyptian tweed but there are these ones um, sequins I'm going to use are much smaller and in the teal section I'll use teal sequin in the cream section I'll use um, this sort of apricotty cream and then um, yeah in the brown section I'll use the khaki brown ones that I have so I'm just like basically using up all these tiny little sets of sequin that I have and attach them with seed beads and then third section oh this is me showing you the little skulls hanging down I'm going to do some more of those as well after I've done the sequins I'll go along and just add more little hanging beads like Christmas decoration sort of thing because I don't think I'll be able to use up all the hand blown glass beads in like actually attaching to the tweed I'll have some left over and I just want to hang them down off the front of the jacket so that it moves because um yeah it's called the tempest and one of my favorite things about seeing the play the Shakespeare play the tempest is how they always do the storm at the start like whether they do something really pathetic enough or they do like an epic I like the ones where they use the entire stage and they get massive sheets of silk in blue and white and they make crashing waves out of like all the stage hands like shaking yeah, anyway guess you had to be there so yeah I um I just love the back because it's such a big piece. The back is the only really big piece in the jacket and it's kind of like a canvas and I am loving this. I know it's a bit Captain Obvious, but I don't know. It's It was just so difficult to do and it looks... I don't know. I, I don't, it looks effortless. Like it's going to look more effortless once I add more. And you can see what I mean about the thin white lines. They become much more obvious once the whole piece is done. So I do think I'm going to have to do something about them, but I'll do all the thick white sections first, cover those in colors. And then, yeah, I wasn't sure about that particularly big round glass bead but no I've decided I like it I've decided I like them all it's not going to be the most practical jacket I have and I always whenever I do a beading video I always get one or two people saying oh I liked it better when it was didn't have any beads on it but I think that's the good thing about sewing YouTube like you get to see how other other people's choices and how those choices play out like you know I, I'd like a when you see the jacket pattern they choose, you're like, hmm, I wouldn't go with something that cropped. I like the long sleeves or I would prefer a three-quarter sleeve. So this is me just showing you all the beads that I still have left. On the sleeves, you have to use smaller, like less three-dimensional, flatter beads. So I have been using the big round ones on the torso of the jacket, particularly the front. And yeah, the flatter, one, um, flatter ones I've also used for the back because obviously every now and again you do like to lean and lean back but I also really really want to use these beads so I don't I I went I used a few too many of the fish so I don't have as many of those left as I would want because the sleeve they're nice and flat but they're also incredibly detailed so they would have been really good for the sleeves but on the other hand I am really happy that there's like 37 of them and Shakespeare had 37 plays well in the folio so yeah I do have a lot to go still, but I felt like I'd done enough to make a video and show you. I'm so excited about this jacket. Oh my goodness, the amount of technique required to make this jacket is extraordinary. 
but I think it's going to look really cool once it's done. And I'm going to have so many, oh, this is me showing you the tiny little sequins. See how they're in all different colours. I don't think I'm going to use the reds, the magentas or the purples, but pretty much every colour, every other colour. Some of them are opaque. I think the there's apricot opaque ones and I do think the cream sections are going to need the opaque ones. And I've got sort of um, yellow transparent and yellow opaque ones as well which I can use in the yellow section and also in the cream section and once I've done that then see the gold um the gold shell ones well I'm going to do vertical lines using them I'm not going to use those blue and white ones at all because they're just a bit too they're not very pri a pirate treasure in my opinion but yeah I also don't love the dark the royal blue ones that I've got on there but I kind of really want to use them up and I think this is literally the only other tweed I'll be able to use them up on so there's only like um 15 beads or something and yeah so there's a little spot in the back of the jacket and there's also a, going to be a couple of spots below the elbow on the sleeves that have um royal blue beads on them but the rest of it won't but yeah so I've I've still got a ways to go, quite some way to go, but um I have made a dent in these beads. Like I've used up a lot of the dead fish. I've used up quite a lot of the hand blown glass beads, and I do think I'll be able to use them all in this, and a lot of the other like um skull beads in the ceramic, the porcelain ones as well. So, yeah, and the giant pearls, I mean, they're just hilarious. I love it. It's not for everyone, obviously, and it's, you don't really get a good idea of what it's going to look like, but I don't know. I'm really happy with it. It's it's coming along nicely and it's it's going to get there eventually. It's taking a long, 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 long time, but I don't know. It's so challenging and fun and I get to play with loads of different colours, so... I'm happy. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've been inspired to experiment with some beading and or make yourself a Chanel style jacket. It's so much fun. Well, difficult, but you know, fun. Anyway, thanks again for watching and happy sewing and beading.